when you first talk to somebody who's about to take the structures exam, they generally are very worried about all the calculations and all the formulas. Uh, when it comes down to it, the structures exam is not really about the calculations or formulas. There's not that many calculations that you need to do. It's mostly about general concepts, sort of basic understandings of how things work how things are braced, how things transfer loads, uh, how different materials work in specific situations, uh, structural situations. But of course, there are also some calculations. So you want to be uh, comfortable with some of the main formulas and sort of uh, basic ways that people uh, put the numbers together. But remember, don't freak out. It's not really about the calculations. It's really more about these sort of generalized issues. So you want to feel comfortable with the, the ability to use the formulas, but it's not the uh, most important aspect of this. Uh, by far, the most important thing is just sort of a general, cross-the-board uh, understanding of how things work out in the field. Let's take an example. Uh, imagine you get a question, and the question is something like, uh, all right, you're supposed to build a healthcare clinic and it's in an earthquake zone. And then maybe there's a list of a series of uh, structural systems. So we have reinforced masonry, we have wood, we have steel, and we have unreinforced masonry. For a healthcare clinic in an earthquake zone, which structural system would you prioritize first and which would you go to last? So if you put them in order, kind of what order would they be? Well, clearly steel is going to be the best one because it's going to have a ductility that's going to allow for it to sort of shake in the earthquake but still be strong enough to hold itself together. Uh, the worst one is going to be the unreinforced masonry because bad earthquake could just shake that thing apart. The, the connection between each of the different bricks works really well from a straightforward compression standpoint, but uh, when you start putting uh, shaking loads and, and uh, tension loads on there, it's going to fall apart fairly quickly. Uh, so then the other two, kind of in order, uh, if steel is one and unreinforced masonry is four, uh, then the other two would be uh, probably reinforced masonry as two and wood as three. So you can see that what this is really about is just sort of understanding some of the issues around what these different structural systems are like and then how they would relate to each other and how they would relate to your decision-making process. Uh, now, I can't promise that this is exactly the kind of question you'll get, but these are the sorts of questions that you'll get uh, for the most part. Probably 50, 60 percent of the questions will be something along these lines where there's sort of a general understanding that has to be demonstrated. There's a little bit of economy, there's a little bit of safety, there's a little bit of uh, sort of the reality of the world, and you have to kind of mix all those things together and then come up with a sort of a logical answer. So this is that, uh, that process where you're going to start wanting to just get used to a lot of the terminology and start focusing on not just the formulas and how they work, but also what do they mean and therefore uh, what other types of responses can you infer from understanding how the formulas work. Uh, so if a formula is about stiffness, uh, how could you answer a word problem about stiffness just by understanding how that formula works? So again, it's not really about the calculations. For the most part, there will still be some calculations, uh, but it was mostly about the sort of general understanding.